APIs are everywhere, powering the apps that we use every single day. But have you ever wondered what's really going on behind the scenes? In this video, we're breaking down the anatomy of a REST API, showing exactly how they work, what makes them so powerful, and why understanding them is the key to building modern software. Hi, if you're new around here, my name is Ryan. I'm an AWS certified solutions architect and developer, and my goal is to teach you modern serverless system design using AWS. Let's dive in. All right, so this is the anatomy of a REST API, a beginner's guide to understanding how APIs work. The purpose of this video is to give an overview of what an API is, how it works, and some general definitions of some of the nomenclature surrounding APIs. So we'll go over an analogy to help you better understand how an API works. We'll break down the anatomy of a URL and of an endpoint, and then we'll talk about like methods and making requests and receiving responses. All right, what is an API? Well, an API is an acronym that stands for Application Programming Interface. APIs offer a way to standardize communication between software applications with a set of rules and protocols. It defines methods and data formats that applications can use to request and receive information, enabling them to interact and perform specific functions. APIs act as intermediaries, allowing developers to access the functionality of other software systems without needing to understand how those underlying systems work. This simplifies integration and enhances efficiency in development processes. Though there are many different kinds of APIs, when somebody says API, they are usually referring to a REST API, and that's going to be the focus of this video. So APIs can be best understood as a restaurant. A patron, or a client in API terms, enters a restaurant and sits at a table with the intention of ordering food. The patron knows that the food is kept in the kitchen, or the server, but is not able to go get that food himself, nor is he a very good cook. So how does the patron get the food that he wants? Enter the waiter, or the API. The waiter listens to the patron's order, or request, and then delivers that order to the kitchen. The kitchen then makes the food, or the response, hands it to the waiter, and then the waiter delivers it to the patron. So you can use this analogy to help you visualize how REST APIs work at their core. So let's talk about how it works. First, an API is called when a client invokes a URL with a specified endpoint and method. A client can be a front-end web application, a user, a back-end, really anything they can communicate over hypertext transfer protocol or HTTP. A URL is a uniform resource locator and it's used to locate specific things on the internet. An endpoint specifies which data the client is looking for from the server. And the method indicates the intention of the request, whether or not the client wants to read or write data. These things together make up the request. A request can contain headers, parameters, or a payload, and we'll talk about more of these here in a little bit. When a request is successfully sent, the server will send back a response. The response doesn't always have to be a successful one, it can also be an error. A response will generally include a status code that indicates whether the request was successful or not. It will also include headers as well as a response body that includes the data that was requested. So let's break down the anatomy of a uniform resource locator or URL. A URL is comprised of many different pieces, the first being the top level domain, in this case, which is .com, and the second level domain, which is Google, and these together comprise the root level domain. In addition to the root level domain, you will have the protocol, which in this case is HTTPS. Some URLs also include a subdomain, in this case, www, but this can be anything that occurs before the second level domain and after the colon slash slash. The final part of the URL is the endpoint, and this is the specific place in the root level domain that you wish to navigate to. If you combine all of these pieces together, other than the protocol, you get the fully qualified domain name. This is the exact location of a place that you wish to navigate to on the internet. So let's talk about how you make a request in a REST API. A request is an outbound call made from a client to an endpoint requesting some sort of data or to perform some kind of function. Making a request is the first step in the client-server communication process. A request includes headers. Headers contain various metadata, some of it essential for the request. Headers can include the type of content being sent, authorization keys or tokens, or the encoding that's used. A request is always sent with a method. A method indicates the desired action category that a client wants the server to execute, and whether the client intends on reading or writing data. The method of the request will dictate which of the following data is sent. The payload is a JSON object with additional data. Path parameters are variables included in the URL path. And query string parameters are appended to the end of the URL to filter data. So let's talk a little bit about methods. Choosing the correct method when making a request is imperative. The same endpoint can have very different requirements depending on the method of the request. 
A get is a method used to fetch data without modifying any resources. An example would be retrieving a list of users. A post method is used to create new resources. For example, adding a user to the database. A put is used to update an entire resource. This would be updating all of a user's details. Whereas a patch is used for updating a partial piece of a resource. For example, changing just a user's email address. And finally, delete is used to delete a resource. This would be like deleting a user completely from the system. Any request can contains headers, and they can also contain path or query string parameters. Post, put, or patch methods usually also include a payload object that contains information about what is to be created or updated. Let's take a look at a couple of example endpoints and what they might look like depending on the method that you're using in the request. So let's say you wanted to update some information about an existing user. This could be an example of what the endpoint might look like. It contains a path parameter of the user ID, which would reference the user that we want to update. The method method we would use might be a put method, and in that put request we would probably have a payload object that would include all of the information about that user that we wanted to update. Let's take a look at a little bit more complex example. So I know this looks like a lot, but let's break this down a little bit. In this request, we're querying for a specific group ID in our path parameter, but then we also have some query string parameters here attached onto the end. In query string parameters, it's always going to start with a question mark, and then following the question mark, it will contain a list of key value pairs with an ampersand as the delimiter between those key and value pairs. In this case, we're going to query a specific group ID, and then the query string parameters dictate that we will filter that data based on only returning active users whose first name equals Ryan. In this case, the method would most likely be a get method. So let's talk about what a response might look like from an API call. All client requests that are successfully received by the server will return a response. A response will generally include some headers, a status code that indicates whether it was a successful or a failed response, and hopefully a body object if it was successful. The body will include the requested data or the error if it was unsuccessful. Usually you'll get this response in JSON format, wrong JSON. And you can see here what an example of that would look like with a status code, some different headers, and then our body object of the requested data. 200 level status codes generally indicate that the request was successful, while 400 and 500 status codes will indicate an error. 400 status codes generally indicating an error with the client request, while 500 status codes will generally indicate an error with the server. Now that you know a little bit about the basics of REST APIs, let's talk a little bit about why that's important. Again, APIs are just an interface that allow in internal and external developers to access a system's resources. More and more organizations are developing an API-first approach. What this means is that the APIs and their structure are designed and developed sometimes even before the application itself, which ensures better integration and scalability. This allows organizations to standardize the way that their data and services are interacted with, and also opens up a path to monetization by allowing third-party developers to access those APIs. APIs offer an enhanced developer experience experience for anyone who wants to build applications. Tools and platforms that streamline API design, testing, and documentation will become more sophisticated, but they will also provide a more seamless experience for developers. APIs are also secure. While a deep dive on API security is outside of the scope of this video, they will be increasingly designed with zero trust principles, which will ensure robust security measures such as continuous authentication and authorization. Also, a lot of businesses are making the move towards cloud-first and microservice architecture architectures. APIs are an integral part of microservice architectures as they facilitate the communication between loosely coupled components. And finally, standardization. Efforts to standardize API practices and protocols will gain momentum. This will help to make APIs more consistent and interoperable between different platforms and industries. I have some additional resources and reading here, but I'll include this PowerPoint as well as all of these resources down in the description. That about wraps up the video for today. I'm curious to hear your experience with APIs, and I'm also curious to hear where you think APIs are going in the future. If there's any other videos that you want to see me make, please let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to like the video. Thank you for watching.